Hello students, so this lab is on resistances, voltages and currents in series circuits. There are three such labs. So here is the first one. Now in order to do the first one, the equipment that you require So the equipment that you require is the AC-DC electronics lab board, resistors, actually you need three resistors, you need a multimeter, the voltage sensor, the current sensor, the two D cells and a bunch of wires. That's what you need. You can read all the theory about this lab on your own. Uh, we know that if resistors are combined in series, then the total resistance is the sum of the resistances. And the currents flowing through all of them will be the same. The voltages across each resistance, when added up, should give us the voltage of the battery. So that's what we're looking at. So you see the circuit here, which is... The series circuit of R1, R2 and R3 connected, of course, in series. And then we also know that we can read the values of the resistances based on the color coding on them. We know that, but the procedure in doing this lab is to get three resistors ranging in values between 100 ohms and 1000 ohms. That's very important. So I have picked three such resistors and I have connected them on the AC-DC board already, as you can see right now. So that's, that is what you're seeing. So here is the first resistance that I've connected. Then the second one and the third one. And I've used connection uh, cables, four of them, one between these two, second one here, third and four. And these connection wires are space holders such that, you know, soon you're going to be using the current sensor to measure the currents and then you would have to remove each one of those connection cables and insert the current sensor in its place. That is the reason why we are having those placeholders right there. So first of all, we need to use the multimeter to measure the resistances at two different points. Okay, so first we're going to measure the resistance between 1 and 2. So we will take the connections between these two points. Because that's our 1 and 2. So resistance 1, resistance 2. So to, uh, turn on the multimeter, put it on the 2 kilo ohm, ohms. 2 kilo ohms because we know that the value of the resistance could be as high as 1000 ohms or more. And then the black should be in the common and the red must be where it says volt ohm milliampere. So that's where you have it. Touch one end, it doesn't matter which end on this and the other end here. So once you do that, you can see it's 0.422 kilo ohms. 0.422 kilo ohms. Make a note of that. That is R12. Similarly, measure R123. That means we need the value of all three in series. For that, place it between these two points actually. And read. The measurement it's 1.433 3233 3, 3, 3 kilo ohms so we got that now do remember that all of these measurements were taken without connecting the battery 
Now, I have placed both the batteries with the correct polarity. So be careful with the positive lined up, positives lined up. And then I've included the battery in the circuit by connecting B4, this is B4, B4 to SW1, which is one end of the switch. The other end of the switch is connected to which is S4. So you see this cable, S4. And then S8 is connected to B1. S8 is, that's S8. This is B1. I've connected them. And also connect B2 to B3 with this big cable, B2 to B3. So after you make sure that you've connected all these connections, make sure that the cables are right in place and tight, we can go on and take the measurements. So now I have the voltage uh, sensor, the wireless voltage sensor. It's turned on as you can see. And uh, we got to make the measurements of voltage between R1, R2 and R3. So this time you got to be careful about the polarities of the voltages. Remember this is the positive. So the positive is coming through the switch here. So I'll put the positive here. That's across R1. I'm going to, oh, that was the negative, sorry. Put the positive across R1 right here and the negative there. And let's try to measure the voltage. So I'm adding the sensor now. The voltage sensor is added. Click on that. And after it's detected, we can just hide it. We don't need a graph or anything here, so we could have just gone on to uh, measuring it. So let's see if I can add a page and just bring the measurement up here. Okay, so this is going to be a measurement. All right. So select the voltage measurement. Right now we are only seeing the voltage. So that's the voltage measurement. And you will see it only after you press the switch down. So press the switch down. So to see the measurement, uh, you need to press the switch down, which I'm doing now. And you got to hit the record. So there it gives you 0.252 volt. Hit stop. So that's how you measure the voltage across R1. Now, do the same to measure the voltage across R2, but maintain the direction of the positive and the negative. So positive on this side and the negative on the other side. So that should work. Let's uh, go again. Let's try. Press the switch down, hit record, and there it is, 0 0.754 or 754 volt, about that, okay? Hit stop, and now go to the measurement of voltage across R3 again. Well, you could either connect here, or you could connect on this, you know, both are the same, so, and the negative here. So, go there, press down the switch, Hit record, and here is the voltage, 2.296 volt. Okay, hit stop, 2.296 volts. That's how you measure the voltages across each one of those resistors. In the same way, you got to measure the voltage across R12, R1 and 2 for which you will connect. I'm not going to show you their measurements, but connected between R1 and 2. So these two places and you take the measurements there. R2 and 3. So you need to also measure the voltage across R2 and 3 for which you will connect 
between R2, one end of R2 and the other end of R3. Okay, so no, R2 would be here. R2 and R3. See that? You have connected it between the first end of R2, which is R2, and then see it's going to R3. So the other end is at R3. The negative is at the other end of R3. So that way you measure the resistances. I mean the voltages. Well, you also need to measure the voltage across R1, 2, 3. That means the positive should now go here on this and the negative could have been there over here is the same point and I think I lost that connection so right there and so when I took the voltage across R123 that is what I get R123 obviously that's going to be the biggest voltage okay so make all those measurements Now we need to measure the currents. So we will uh, turn off the voltage sensor, power it off, because we have already measured the voltages. Take out the voltage sensor from there. And we got to connect the current sensor. So I have uh, powered on the current sensor and uh, Pasco capstone has detected it. Click on that so as to connect and then get it out of the way. And then go back to this, and now you got to pick current. See that? Pick current because we're ready to measure current there. Now, the current sensor has always got to be included in series in the circuit. Therefore, Watch carefully, you got to remove this cable that was in place. See that cable, that was the placeholder, I've removed it. And now include the current sensor right there. Take care of the positive and the negative, just as before. So that's the positive on this side. And let me show you that more clearly. And you have the negative on the side. So where you had that cable, you removed that cable and included the current sensor. And now to make the measurements, press down on this and uh, hit record on that. And let's see what happens. All right, it seems to be reading a very small current. It's 0 0.002 ampere, which is like 2 milliampere. Okay, 2 milliampere. All right, that was the current. And now we need to measure the current uh, through R2. So what do you do? You got to remember to put that cable back. The cable that was removed remember to put it back so there is still the circuit path for the current to flow remove this one now i've taken that out and uh, once again go with the uh, positive on the side and the negative here and press down on that hit record and the current is 0 0.002 ampere. What? All right. Now you got to remove that current sensor from there. Put that cable back. So the cable that you had removed, put it back. You can either put it here or on the first one. Remove this third cable now include the current sensor there where you have removed the cable now please make sure that all the other cables are in place otherwise there won't be any electrical contact let's see the currents should obviously be the same in a series circuit the currents must be the same that's why we get the same reading I want you to do something before you take these measurements I should have told this before but look at these you know, if you click on this, you can 
either reduce the number of decimal places or increase the number of decimal places. So uh, let's increase the number of decimal places to at least four. And if we take that previous measurement now, uh, you will see that it's more accurate. It's 0.0014 ampere, see? So before you take any of these measurements, please uh, make sure that you increase the number of decimal places here, all right? That's what we got to do. I increased it by one more. Let's see now. That's uh, even better, 0.0013. It's very sensitive now, so there's fluctuation. So that's what you got to do. At least have four decimal places. So here's the data sheet. Uh, you have the resistances. First of all, you got to read the colors and uh, get their values from the uh, colors. You know what the tolerance is? That's given by the fourth color. So that is what you get from uh, the color coding. And then the measured resistance Remember that uh, the resistors must not be connected in the circuit when you measure them. Or in other words, there should be no current flowing through them. The batteries must not be connected. Okay, so you get measured resistance. And then we have the table for uh, the measured voltages that you had to measure, six of them. And then the measured current. In each case, you also had to uh, calculate the current. Okay, so the calculation for the current is given. You know, current is total voltage of the batteries divided by the total resistance. So, and that's how you do the slab. And uh, make sure that uh, you don't make any kind of errors. Uh, this is how the uh, rubric is. The points are distributed. So that is the lab on measuring voltages and currents through resistances connected in series. So I hope you understood uh, where this lab is taking you. We have understood that the current flowing through all the resistors are equal no matter what their value. But on the other hand, the voltages across each resistor are different. But when you add all those voltages, you get the voltage of the battery. So that is the result from this experiment. Thank you. See you on the next one.